Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio. I heard about a way to heat your surface for coloured pencils to eliminate burnishing or using solvents and to save tons of time. I was intrigued and did some research and the heat pads that work are reptile heat pads. So this is what I'm going to be reviewing and demoing. The one I bought is black, thin, smooth and glossy. My size is 42 by 20 centimeters or 16 and a half by 11 inches and 20 watts. They come in various sizes. It plugs in and has a dial on the side where you can barely or just see the slider that goes from low to high. I kind of wish that there were numbers so that once I found the correct heat, I could go there every time I got going as, my, as when my initial experiments were done, I didn't end up moving it around all that much. I've begun my demo part way in as all of my findings and later experiments happened after the first layers much later. Of course, you have to be careful that you're using a decent surface as they actually do get quite hot and you can burn wooden tables with them and you also shouldn't place them on a surface that can cause a fire. Essentially, they're used for reworking pigments. Because the pencils I used are wax-based, you don't need solvents because heat is the solvents. Apparently, you can rework indefinitely. And I'd heard about them because I had read about the Icarus heated board and I really wanted one, but those are $350 and up, so I wanted to find an alternative. The heat pads range in size from about 6 by 8 inches to about 60 by 20 and they range in price from only $10 up. The forums that I looked at mentioned that they might not be hot enough but for $12 at the time of this YouTube video, which is what this one cost, I was willing to give it a try. I love coloured pencils but it's definitely a labour of love as they take a very long time. A lot of people have issues with their hands and don't want to burnish or can't. So an alternative to burnish, it, burnishing is the use of solvent. Well, some people are highly sensitive to solvent, so that's not an alternative either. I found that there isn't the need for as many layers. It's very responsive. It sort of feels like you have a hot water bottle under your hand, that kind of heat. It would be easy to go overboard early on since the lines come out thicker and richer and lay down is so much faster. It's pleasant to work with, but much stranger than working on just paper. The pad makes everything go so much quicker and I realized after I began editing that it only took me two hours to create from start to finish and that's amazing compared to how much time a coloured pencil drawing can take. The paper didn't buckle but it did bend a little as I turned the heat all the way up to its highest level. I think you need to begin the colours lighter than you want since they are so much more intense. You really want to barely skim the surface and there's hardly any graininess. It's almost like you're burnishing as you go. It might go a little too fast for when you first start because you're just not used to it. I think if you didn't want a vivid drawing, you might want to choose more muted tones at first until you build the layers. The pigments lay down darker, which is fine if you want rich saturation. Everything's very vivid much more so than I expected. So it's definitely different and it's a learning curve. I felt it actually really changed the way that you draw. It's not really like working with colored pencils at all. It's like a supercharged version. You have to be extremely careful around the edges because of the fact that it'll melt. I didn't resharpen any of my pencils as it went so fast, but the tips won't stay at their super sharp points just something to be aware of. So it's best to work up to your edge rather than actually define the edge. I used an AFMAT pencil sharpener 
to get these really long sharp points. You must start with sharp pencils. I'm not sure it would work so well if they were more blunt than mine. So sharpen them really well before you begin. I tried a colourless blender and these are blending pencils ideal for blending and softening hard edges in pencil drawings all without changing your colour palette because they don't contain any pigments. So this is the one with the white tip that I'm using right now. So I tried it on the heat pad and it worked so well because I had enough pigment down and this meant I just had to move the pigment around to get an even smooth blend and it was easy. There is This is a lot more controllable than using solvent to blend, which does work really well, but can be problematic in application. And then there's always the toxicity of solvents to consider as well. I was able to experiment with erasing, which is normally quite difficult with colored pencils. I used one of the types that spins and I was able to get quite a bit of the pigment out, which was probably only possible because the paper was warm. I wanted to get some striations or variegated colours back in my drawing, so I thought I'd try the little Tombow Mono Eraser and was able to get quite a bit of pigment back where I wanted it. The only difficulty was that the ends of the erasers had to be cleaned so the different colours didn't contaminate each other. And to see the difference, here's a picture of before and after erasing. And the last thing I did was to wait until the paper cooled down completely and added some sharp details with the pencils. So some thoughts on the heat pad. It heats within literally a couple of minutes. It blended really well. It goes on so smoothly. It took hardly any work and is extremely inexpensive. It was so pleasant to lay the colour down so vividly and so fast. I used 11 colours for the tulip and only two for the stem and that's not a lot of colours for a coloured pencil piece. You can turn it down for gentle blends, turn it up for faster coverage. It cuts your workload down considerably. And I think if you enjoy working with coloured pencils, you will love it so much more as a result. I think it's an indispensable tool to have around. I may never want to go back to the way I created with coloured pencils before. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. I'll see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching.